Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to do a credit card duo showdown between Capital One and American Express. Now there are many different duos out there that you could have. You could have the Chase duo of having something like the Chase Sapphire Reserved and the Chase Freedom Unlimited, or the City duo having something like the City Premier card and also the City Double Cash card. Or you could have a combination of different cards with different programs, such as having yourself something like the Chase Freedom Flex card along with the City Double Cash card. These could all end up being duos you could have in your wallet that could work out really, really well for yourself. Now, I'm someone who doesn't just have a duo. I have many, many credit cards. But one thing I've learned as I've talked to a lot of people about credit cards is that most people don't want to have it be as complicated of a setup as I have. They just want something that's simple, easy to understand, and can allow them to get themselves really good value for their spend. So when I hear that, what I tell people to do is find a program that works out well for them get a couple cards from that program, and then take full advantage of that program that you are connected with. Now, when I look at the four major programs of being Chase, Capital One, City, and American Express, I see as when it comes to having duo cards, Capital One and American Express have the best options for duo cards out of these four programs. This doesn't mean that Chase and City have terrible cards. I'm just thinking of if you happen to be someone who's looking for a two card setup, Capital One and American Express are gonna have the best duo options. And with the Capital One duo option, you're going to have the Capital One Venture X card and also the Saver card. Now on American Express' side, you're going to have the American Express Platinum card and the American Express Gold card. I wanna compare these two duos and see which one ends up being the best option out there for a duo to have in your wallet. So the first thing we need to look at with these two setups is going to be the annual fee. There is a significantly higher annual fee with American Express as compared to with Capital One. With Capital One, you have a $395 annual fee for their two cards, and with American Express, you have a $945 annual fee. Now this is substantial and should not be overlooked. But one thing that I will note and get into is going to be the credits and perks that are connected with the cards to help offset the annual fee. So with the Capital One Duo, the credit you're going to get with those cards is going to be, you're gonna get yourself a $300 travel credit, and this ends up being when you use Capital One's travel portal with the Venture X card, you get your first $300 reimbursed back to you, plus also you get yourself 10,000 Venture Miles every single anniversary of keeping this card open. Additionally, with the Saver One card, you get yourself an Uber One membership for free. Uber One costs $10 a month, so this ends up being a great benefit for the Saver One card that doesn't even have an annual fee. This is easy, positive value from very minimal work required. All you'd have to do is just use the $300 travel credit through Capital One's travel portal, and now you're already winning with this setup. With the Amex setup, you do get yourself a bunch of credits, but they're nowhere near as simple as the Capital One setup. You get yourself monthly credits. These can end up being quite annoying to a lot of people. So if you want something that's more simple, Capital One is definitely a better setup when it comes to simplicity. The thing about the Amex setup is that Although combined, these two cards are requiring a $945 annual fee, if you could take advantage of many of the different credits that are connected with these Amex cards, you can get yourself a decent amount more than the annual fee. I'm not gonna go over all the different credits and perks that are connected with these two cards, but I will go over some of the highlighted ones that I feel are the most valuable and easiest to use. So the first one is going to be that you're gonna get yourself $320 towards Uber. It is going to be monthly credits. You're also gonna get yourself $120 in a dining credit. You're going to get yourself $200 in a hotel credit. You're gonna get yourself $240 in a digital entertainment credit. You're gonna get yourself $200 in an airline incidentals credit. If you can take full advantage of the different credits that I listed, you get yourself $1,080 in value. Now, these are the more popular ones that are out there. As I said earlier, there are even more credits that are connected with these cards, but I tend to find them to be a little bit more on the niche side, so not everyone can get full value from those other credits, but there are other ones out there that could add even more value to your Amex setup. One of the perks that I will highlight will be Hilton Gold Status, and Hilton Gold Status gives you a number of different benefits such as room upgrades or free breakfast or daily spend credits with the hotel. So although the annual fee is significantly higher with the American Express setup, you do have the potential to get yourself a lot more value with the American Express setup as well. Now, even with that said, I do believe that for the vast majority of people, they would rather the simplicity that's connected with the Capital One setup and the annual fees and credit sets with that as compared to the complexity that is with the American Express setup, even if you can get yourself even higher value from these cards. Now, before I break down the multipliers for these cards, if you happen to be interested in either the Capital One cards or the American Express cards, 
please check out my referral link in the description box. If you do decide to use it, it does really help out the channel and I'd be incredibly thankful for your support. Next, we're gonna look at which duo has better earning potential. So with the Capital One Duo, you're going to get yourself 3X back on dining, 3X back on groceries, 3X back on streaming services, 3X back on entertainment, 2X back on all purchases, and there also is higher multipliers with Uber, where you're going to get yourself 10x back on either Uber rides or Uber Eats. And also you can get yourself 10x back on hotels and car rentals booked through Capital One's Child Portal with the Venture X. And then 5x back on flights booked through Capital One's Child Portal with the Venture X. With the American Express setup, it is a lot less categories, but it has more direct ones for higher multipliers. So you're going to get yourself 5x back on flights booked directly with the airlines. And then you get 4x back on dining and groceries. And then 1x back on all the purchases. So when we're comparing earning potential between these two duos, I would say that the Capital One duo has the better earning potential as compared to the American Express duo. Although it does have higher earning categories and ones that I think that are probably more popular with the dining coming in at 4x and then also flights giving you 5x directly with the airlines. The fact that you get yourself 3x back in a bunch more categories with the Capital One Duo and then also that 2x back in that catch all category with the Venture X, I believe is just going to earn more people more points with that duo. And then being able to get yourself the 10x back with Uber and if you do happen to want to use the travel portal, you could get yourself even higher multipliers or something like car rentals, getting yourself 10x back. I feel for myself and for the majority of people, they'll probably end up earning more points with the Capital One Duo as compared to the American Express Duo. Next, I want to compare lounge access. With the American Express Platinum and the Capital One Venture X card, you're going to get yourself lounge access when you have both of these cards. With the Venture X card, you get yourself priority pass and also access to the Capital One Lounge. Now, there are a few of these around and people have been very happy with them, but when you compare lounge access from Capital One to American Express, I just don't think that it's comparable because American Express right now is the king of giving you lounge access. So not only do you get yourself party pass lounge access, you also get yourself access to the Delta Sky Clubs when you're flying with Delta, the Escape Lounge, and also the Centurion Lounge, which at this moment has more than I believe triple the amount of lounges as compared to the Capital One Lounge. So although Capital One is building itself up when it comes to the lounge access from its program, I just don't think that it's even close to comparing to American Express at the moment. Additionally, with both the Capital One Venture X card and the American Express Platinum card, you can speed pass security at the airport when you purchase yourself global entry, which you can get for free with both of these cards. The thing about the American Express Platinum card is that you also get yourself a free clear membership. Clear allows you to speed pass security even faster by putting you at the front of the line when you end up going through airport security. Next, we're going to look at redeeming points with these two programs. So with the Capital One program, you have the Saver One card and the Venture X card. Technically, these two cards are going to be earning different type of currencies. With the Saver One card, you're going to be earning cash back. And then with the Venture X card, you're going to be earning Venture Miles. But the thing about this program is that if you happen to have the Saver One card, you can grab onto that cash back and then transfer it over to the Venture X card, giving you each penny equaling out to one Venture Mile. But this only works one way. You can't grab onto your Venture Miles and then transfer them over to being cash back with your Saver One card. The only reason why you would want to do that is if you want to take advantage of the transfer partners that are connected with Capital One. Now, Capital One and Venture Miles do have the ability to erase travel purchases, equaling out to being one cent per point for each Venture Mile, which should be the base level for redeeming your Venture Miles. Technically, you could redeem it for non-travel purchases and get yourself half the amount of value, but it really wouldn't make any sense to do that because you're going to be getting yourself terrible value for your points. With the American Express setup, you can also redeem your points towards a statement credit, but again, you're going to get yourself terrible value for your points, giving you only 0.6 cents per point in value. So the thing about the American Express setup is that you don't really have an easy way to get yourself a base level value for your points because if you want to redeem it for a statement credit, this is the amount of value you're going to get for it. Whereas at least with the Capital One Venture Miles, you can get yourself one cent equaling out to one mile. But with American Express, you're going to have to have a better understanding of taking advantage of transfer partners to get yourself decent, good, or even great value for your points. Now, if you happen to have the American Express Charles Schwab card as compared to just the vanilla American Express Platinum card, then you could redeem your American Express membership reward points into your Charles Schwab account out at being 1.1 cent equaling out to each point. 
Now, this is what I would consider decent and above base level value of only being one cent equaling up to one point, but you have to make sure that you have the American Express Charles Schwab card, because if you don't, then you won't have this option. So if you don't have the American Express Charles Schwab card, what you're gonna wanna do is transfer over your points to transfer partners. Now, when we compare the transfer partners between American Express and Capital One, I would say that it's pretty easy to say that American Express has not only more transfer partners, but also better transfer partners. Now, while they're not my favorite and I don't normally recommend it, American Express does have the option to transfer over to many different domestic airlines that a lot of people would want to transfer over to and take advantage of. And also it has a lot of international transfer partners that are really strong and give you a ton of value. Plus also the hotel transfer partners with American Express being Hilton, while again, I wouldn't normally recommend to transfer over to them, it still ends up being at least good to have that as an option since Hilton ends up being one of the better hotel programs out there. Whereas when you look at with Capital One and their transfer partners, their best transfer partner was Turkish, but Turkish just did a massive devaluation to their program to the point where I can barely even see a reason to even transfer over any of my Capital One Venture Miles over to the Turkish Miles and Smiles program. American Express also tends to have more frequent transfer bonuses to its airline programs as compared to Capital One. It's not that Capital One doesn't do it, it's just more likely that you're gonna have the option to get yourself a transfer bonus with American Express. So with that said, I would say if you were someone who's deeper into understanding the different airline transfer programs and how to take full advantage of them, you're probably gonna end up getting yourself more value from having American Express points as compared to Capital One Venture Miles because American Express just has a lot more and also better transfer partners. So which of these two duos is going to be the best one to have in your wallet if you're just looking for a two card setup? Now, even though I just ended off with saying a number of great things about American Express being better than Capital One, I believe that the Capital One setup is going to be a better setup for most people to have in their wallet. Just because of the simplicity and the fact that you can get yourself positive value just from taking advantage of the $300 travel credit with the card ends up making this card make a lot more sense for the majority of people because most people don't want to have to keep up with the additional work that is required when you end up getting yourself the American Express cards. The monthly credits can end up being annoying and then also having to learn the full detail of the different transfer partners ends up being something that takes a decent amount of work but if you are willing to put in the work, I do think you can end up getting yourself more value from the American Express setup. So if you are someone who has studied transfer partners and understands how to get yourself more value from taking advantage of those, and also if you are someone who doesn't mind having to use the different credits monthly, bi-yearly, or yearly, then I do think you can end up getting yourself more value from the American Express setup. The question really just comes down to, are you willing to put in the work to get yourself that more value? And I do believe that most people are looking for a simple setup that's going to give them max returns and they don't have to put in a ton of work, which I can completely understand. I'm someone who really enjoys the points of miles game. And for that reason, I do have the American Express Duo. I also have the Venture X card because I just want to take full advantage of the different credits and perks that are connected with all the different credit cards out there. But I could definitely see myself in a few years wanting to slow down on how much I am into this game and then only just using something like the Capital One Duo and getting myself some really good value from that. But let me know in the comment section down below which credit card duo do you think is better, the Capital One Duo or the American Express Duo. Now, if you haven't have any questions about any of these cards, also drop it down in the comment section down below. I'll do the best I can to answer it. And if you happen to really like this video, do me a favor. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, share this video, and have a beautiful rest of your day.